Hey, all you rad dads out there. Dude, I'm ready spaghetti. I'm, well, I was born ready. Let's do it. So, Doug, thank you so much for joining me on the Rad Dads Show. I'm going to start by asking, who are you? Um, let's see. Uh, I am Doug Carrion from Hermosa Beach, California. I am a punk rock impresario, a guy that's been involved in the entertainment machine in perpetuity. Um, I'm posy, posy, posy guy, positive guy. Uh, I'm a parent of two. Uh, I have a, a 12 year old, going to be 13 and a 15 year old. So I'm, a, I'm full blown like rad dad, punk rock yeah. dad, underscore punk rock dad. Um, and then on the other side, uh, some people might know me as I, uh, played in the descendants i played in dag nasty uh i played in the Cottonmouth kings uh, i've been involved in the music and had a uh punk rock kind of public life uh since i was about 16 17 16 when i started playing like backyard parties and stuff like that and that's it and and off the rip before we dive into it um i want to say thank you for the opportunity to talk about parenting because it's something that i really don't uh it's something that i don't really do often for two reasons. One, I, I'm kind of a private guy. There's that. And then, well, my public life is public, but my family life, I usually keep relatively private, but also parenting, which is, pro which is really fascinating is incredibly subjective. So I have a tendency to not want to be a guy that's kind of being judgy or here's the way to do it and so forth. In, in that I realize it's incredibly challenging and complicated and it's not a one size fits all thing at all. So the things that I experience might work for me where you'd be like, dude, that's whack. That'll never fly. So that's kind of cool. So thank you for the opportunity to talk about parenting, which is something that um, I don't normally do in depth. How's that? So yeah. thank you. Yeah, no, thank, thank you. And uh, thanks for kind of saying that. I think that's one of the things we were kind of chatting a little bit before we mm -hmm. kind of got going, but um, that's one of the things people really like about this show, I think, is hearing some of those different perspectives, maybe some different strategies for dealing with things. And you're right, every family is a little bit different, right? And what works for one, one unit might not work for another one. And everybody kind of has to figure out their own way. So I like that no judgment kind of uh, comment. None, yeah. none, you know, yeah, none. You, don't know, you don't really know like what, what people are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, but it, it is funny because there, despite that, there are lots of things that we do all kind of have in common as parents and certainly as dads, right. And things that we experience. And yeah. You know, one connection to be a parent. Th there's that. I mean, the, the, Part of it is like, like just putting on the putting on the parent hat and the 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 dad hat. It's the greatest, most challenging, awesome, and scariest endeavor you'll ever jump into. Like holy smokes! But it's just it's incredible. It's incredible. One of the best pieces of advice that I had gotten way a gazillion years ago, before as I was jumping on the parent train. Uh, um, so uh, my son, who's 15, so we're talking like 16 years ago. So my wife was pregnant and, and this guy had said to me, you know what? I'm not going to give you any advice. And it always resonated <laughs> with me like, like yeah. that. That guy knew exactly what the deal is. And then the further you go into it and, and depending on how, um, you know, what kind of creature you are, where I find, I find people interesting. I find human development, interesting child yep. development, interesting. I find it fascinating. And so you realize like, wow, that guy was straight up on point in that there are general ideas, like eh, yep. kind of general things. And then for the, the, the rest of it is really, it is ridiculously subjective and there's so many variables just that can happen just within your own household, yeah. which make it, uh, an, which make an infinite amount of combinations, um, that you are, uh, uh, trying to analyze and figure out like, well, how do I do this and not suck? How do I do this? Yeah, exactly. Not, you know, <laughs> and not totally, totally blow it. Um, one of the things that you might not know, but is 
interesting on the parenting front was once I became a dad, I became a sober guy, interesting. which was really fascinating. And I haven't looked at it other than like, I always wanted to lead by example. And so once the parenting thing happened where it was like, Woo-hoo, we're having kids. <laughs> yes. I like, bam, stop drinking. And I was a pretty good drinker. I was a seasoned drinker. I'm in the entertainment world. I'm in the yeah. rock and roll world. Uh, and that was something I talk about a silver lining or a gift that comes back the other way. Like just, and I'm not judging people who aren't like, ah, whatever you do you. But for me, whew, like that was such an incredible calibration that was just straight up instantaneous boom and sober guy was that was that a decision kind of prior to becoming a dad sort of like immediately prior was it kind of you realized something that made you kind of go in that direction once you became a dad uh it was something that happened no it was not thought out a hundred percent no but I did realize, you know, again, we're, we're talking about being an influence and I realized that that wasn't going to be a necessary um, additive to being the best person I could be. So it was, it's a bit like, I didn't think about it in advance. It was just something that kind of was like, holy smokes this little creature is looking to me to set the examples and weasel your way through navigate problems and so forth. And I don't think that being um, pickled is a great way to approach that. And that might work for other people, but for me, it scared almost maybe even to be perfectly honest, maybe in a way where there was like a fear thing where I was like, holy shh, I can't drop the ball. Like I got like, right. and that, so not premeditated, but partially, uh, you know, partially wanting to be the best human that I could be and best influence. And then straight up, just like fear, like, whoa, how are you going to do that if you're not as clear as you can be? Yeah. And that's a big struggle as a parent is setting an example for your kids. Right. And, and feeling that, um, pressure to do that and figuring out how to do that and how to, you know, model that good behavior for them. Yeah. You know, also when you're, when you're jumping into the parenting thing, um, you have embarked in an area that is so emotionally complex and intellectually complex that I don't think from outside, an outside observer cannot quantify what is about to happen Mm -hmm. now let's scientifically break some things down and say what women can do is freaking amazing like just holy smokes like that's wow (laughs) that's amazing that's crazy then you talk about there are certain core values that you have and core values that your partner how wife has that could be very different are they aligned question and that's a big question yeah then you throw inside the homeostasis where you're talking about your your family like what are her mom and dad's core values are they going to be in the queue what are your mom and dad's core Mm -hmm. values are they can be and so all of a sudden what sounds like oh we're just having a kid is a great thing and a beautiful thing and a wonderful journey. And then it can also be some terrain that has to be navigated on who does what, who's, who, who, I hate to say who's the decision maker, but it's like, who's running the show, you know, whose lead do we follow? When do you lean on other people for advice? When don't you lean on advice? What, what's acceptable, um, uh, I'm using my skateboarding analogy, what's acceptable trial and error where you're learning and you go, wow, I totally freaking chum that. And you go, don't do that again. Yeah. Don't do that. Uh, your results sucked. You got to figure out a better way to do it. So those are, you know, that's kind of, you know, 
for me, in a way, jumping into parenting isn't an easy thing. And then when you look at the layers of how, whatever, where you are at that time in your life, where your wife is, where your immediate family is, where your extended family is, yep. dang, that can be very, very complicated. And, it, and it's not something I don't say in a way where like, don't do it. it in fact, I just say, be prepared to, ah, it will redefine your understanding of love. Whatever your pre preconceived yeah. idea is, it's going to flip that sucker upside down and you're going to be like, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know? So it's, it's an amazing thing. Even, even the, uh, the mama bear, papa bear thing that yeah. happens where it's like, you're ridiculously protective. Just those are just things that you don't think from the outside. And then when you're on the roller coaster, you're like, wow, I didn't know that that's what that's going to happen. So amazing, an amazing experience uh, mm -hmm. with lot, lots of highs and lows and challenges and so forth. But kind of rat talk about rat. Yeah, that's rad. and a lot of people, a lot of people talk about that struggle, especially with your first child, right? Like going mm -hmm. from a person who. I, it was really just all about me or maybe about me and my partner or, or whatever your situation is to now it's kind of about somebody else. And it, it, like, I think it connects to what you're talking about kind of forces some of that introspection and, and really thinking about like, what are the things that are important to me? And um, yeah, I'm, are, are our values aligned and things like that. So that, ch that shift can be very difficult. Um, especially yeah. as we're trying to do that between maybe two people. Right. Right. Well, let's, let's, We'll use myself as an uh, as an example. So, playing music and being involved in the entertainment machine can be very selfish. Yeah, that can be very selfish. Like that's just uh, you can be annoyingly selfish or in your head, cerebral, where you're in your head and I'm right. thinking about stuff. Okay, when you throw kids into the machine. I don't think that you have the, um, that skills. Let me, let me frame this the right way. That, um, luxury ain't there anymore. Yeah. It's like you, you are not there. You have to be like super present to solve problems <laughs> as they come up. And what's fascinating is there's, uh, I'll generalize and say 300 problems that you're tackling right now and as they get older there's just a new set of 300 problems you're yeah. tackling and it doesn't necessarily like Woo we solved that it's just a new series of like um challenges that you're navigating in my particular situation i've been my wife and i have been together for t almost 30 years wow, so congrats. we thank you and I'm a guy that's in the entertainment industry and I live in Los Angeles. So it can be done where you're able to find balance with your partner to try to make things work if you're in it to win it. Like that's up to you. Like, you know, do you want to be in it or do you want to check out? I checked in. I'm like, I'm in all in. So what is unique about our situation is that my wife and I, we dated or we were, we were together for five years. Then we were married for five years yeah. and kid one didn't happen until the 10th year. So by that time we had a pretty good understanding of how each other worked, how, what it, we had lived together. We kind of knew some of those things. So we were really um, looking forward to a new chapter Right. And so we embraced being parents. It wasn't a surprise right. at all. Like it was a very like, okay, we're in this, like, you know, as, as much as you can't control life, we were kind of like, okay, we're ready to go to this next level. Yep. And then, and then you put on that hat and you start doing all those things that, uh, you know, going down that road of, uh, wanting to raise a family and, and do you buy a house? Do you not buy a house? Do you stay in an apartment? Is getting pregnant easy? Is getting right. pregnant hard? There could be medical underlining things. You're like, which every family has their challenges. I'm not perfect, but 
all those things. But we really like, by the time we had gotten to kids, we had a pre, like both of us were really excited about it. And we had done a lot of our adult living pre kids. Yeah. Yeah. We had had great wine all over the world and all of that. So it's pretty like a, we, we, in, in a way we didn't rush into it. We timed, timed it out as best we could. So that, uh, that sort of shock, I mean, though you, you, <laughs> you're never going to escape that. You guys were kind of a little bit more prepared um, for that shock when it, ar- when it arrived. I think maybe even, maybe even, I, I, exci- it wasn't shock because it was something where we were, we yeah. were both agreed like, okay, we're going to start having a, fa- like we're going to start, you know, trying to have kids. You know yeah. what I mean? So, so shock would be if it was like, Hey, what happened? Where it was like, we were right. both, you know, going into it, you know, committed yeah. to each other and really like, okay, we're going to do this. And then you, you start trying to have a family, raise a yeah. family, you know, get pregnant. Yeah. And I just mean like, um, you know, the, un- the unexpected, I guess, so the things that even though you're ready, you still come up against things as a new parent that are like, Oh my God, I, (laughs) no amount of reading could have prepared me for this or whatever. Right. No way. There's no way there's no, there's no amount of reading. And you know, what's really wild too is, um, some of the reading and and I can say this. So this is, let's say like for people that are new parents and they're Mm -hmm. going into this and they're like, and I'll even drill further into just talking to the dads. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, that's great. Okay. There's general ideas, but for the most part, you're going to have to decide a lot of things on your own. Mm -hmm. What works for you? There are some hard, fast rules when it comes to safety and da 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 da, like just common sense. You go, look out, (laughs) look out. (laughs) But for the most part, you know, you're going to be solving and developing what works for you on the spot yeah and that might change and so my point is don't inundate yourself with oh i've got to read every book in theory what you'd what i would softly suggest is sample a couple of books and then create your own your version of what works for you because man i'm a i'm a strong cup of coffee so sometimes i can come on kind of intense and what i would think is critical defcon 12 critical you might think brett you're like dude that's a wash what are you talking about why are you freaking thinking about that and you know what that's what makes parenting so cool where what you think is really important is badass. Like that's what you think is important, yeah. you know? And, and so back to the new dads that are jumping into that, you know, be open-minded and realize that there's no one size fits all approach. Not only that, if the universe, I guess if you decide to have two kids, surprise, those kids aren't going to be at all alike. It's going to be yeah. totally different. And you're like, what are you talking about? It's the same dad and the same mom, the same house. Yeah. We didn't even move. The kids are totally different. And that's what's um, the, the greatest thing is that it's unquantifiable. It's totally fluid. And the more fluid you are, obviously there's hard, fast rules kid wants to get up on a ladder they're a little kid don't do it (laughs) Um, but for the most part just trying to to um figure out what is your way of doing it how are you gonna identify what's your approach yeah my approach what's your approach it's like cut yourself some slack and and uh you know, figure out what works for you. Don't feel that pressure, right? Because a lot of, I think a lot of new parents especially feel the pressure, right? Like, what am I supposed to do here? How do I deal with this? What do you recommend about sleeping or potty training or, you know, whatever it is and what works, I I think you're totally right. What works for one 
family, but even what works for one child within that family might not work in the next situation, right? And yeah. so I, I've got a five-year-old and a two-year-old and and Ooh. definitely have learned that with the, the two-year-old, like mm-hmm. this is not the same ball game here. Totally. The other thing too, is that what's what's beautiful is that your parenting style may be very different than your wife's, yeah. like totally different. And then you have to figure out collectively between the two of you what's the path forward you know um i know for me like the older i get the more i realize how much i don't know which is frightening and at the same time liberating because it allows me to be even more fluid in a situation with the exception of anything that has to do with safety when it comes to safety i could be like almost like paranoid dad, like super nervous guy, nervous dad, yeah. like nervous guy. Uh, even though I'm relatively confident as an adult and blah, 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 blah. But when it comes to parenting, I realize it's very subjective. So I err on the side of actually being a little bit more protective, yeah. you know, than loose. Right. And then, and then my wife might be the other way where she's incredibly protective on some things and very loose on other things. So we kind of, in, 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 in a way your balance, trying to find that balance. Um, and I, and I think that, you know, when you're for new pair for new parents, you have to figure out that there's about there, everybody's going to have an opinion. Yeah. And so you, everybody's going to have an opinion. And so you're going to have to determine how much you validate that person's opinion or not. Right. And I can't say that for you, like for you inside your, you know, your dad, you got a two and a five-year-old, you lean on your wife, check. And then from there, maybe if your parents are alive, maybe you leave it on your mom and dad and you're like, Hey, I'm navigating this. Is this cool? Is this not? Maybe uh, they're not, uh, good with that information or their style of parenting isn't necessarily how you would do things. Yeah. So one has to be very careful. Like you have to be very careful on where you're getting advice. Like that's why I don't really dispense advice on parenting uh, because I realize it's super subjective. Um, but to be really ca- cautious of that, like there are times, you know, there are times where you can, um, uh, be asking the wrong person for some information and poof, that can boomerang backwards sure. or, or you'll be in a situation where you and your, you and your wife agree a, and you go to grandpa and grandma's house and they want to throw B into the, into the equation yeah. and how to navigate that, especially if it's your in-laws, very challenging. Right. Really, really challenging. Whoo, you know, that's a that's a thing. For sure. Um, so this is the Rad Dad Show. Doug, mm-hmm. are are you a rad dad? Dude, I'm I'm gonna go with I am not only am I rad, I'm a rad punk rock dad. Yeah. Um, and when you're asking me that question, let's see, my ear hears through the lens of whom am I a rad dad? So I'll answer that. Through my own lens, I'm freaking totally rad because I'm doing it. I'm yep. present and I'm doing it. And it's like, yeah, I got a couple couple of marks on the scoreboards. Have I totally chummed and fallen and made horrible decisions? Yes. Have I learned from them and tried to be better? Yes. So rad is like, yeah, like totally rad, like rad. Maybe even, maybe even uh, I'm the raddest dad in this house. So let's go with that. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's, that is, you know, that's sometimes all you need, right? Like, yeah. And I think people need to know, know that like you're there, you're doing it. That's rad. So how, Just, do you, that's, how do you define it? How do you define what's a rad dad? Well, let me, I, so now I'm going to go, I'm going to give you two more before I do that sure. through the lens of, through the lens of my son, I would be considered probably a pretty rad dad through the lens of my daughter. I would be probably considered not rad. So it's amazing <laughs> that I have one of each. Um, but tell so, me about that. Sure. So uh, I think that part of it is um, 
part of it is they're totally different people. Yep. Totally different. And so for you, because you've got two and five, I can say, generally speaking, generally speaking, okay, um, by the time your oldest is about five, seven, most of his or her personality will be kind of locked in. And you'll be able to be like, um, if it's a boy or a girl, uh, Samantha definitely likes this. Samantha definitely doesn't like that. Yeah. And you learn that. And, you know, when they're little, when they're little wieners, you know, they're two, you still got a little ways to go. You know, there's still, there's too much development still going on. So so you got a a ways to go, but boy, let me tell you, by the time they're five to seven, you have a pretty good understanding of personality and what that means, how they're going to be. That to me is like crazy. Yeah. Amazing. And amazing. And at the same time, like that's the rule book right there. Like that's the roadmap and you can either choose to ignore it (laughs) or work with it. Okay. So, um, with my daughter, she has a tendency to be a little bit more of a perfectionist. Okay. She's more English art, very, very, that other brain. I can't tell if it's the right or the left. Uh, a little bit more like that. She's ridiculously social. So for her, optics are important. Yeah. Ah, And you go, wow, that's pretty mint to know that. My son, freakishly off the chart smart. They're both crazy smart, uh, but more scientific guy, ridiculously analytical. Um, He is... I'm not going to say antisocial, but selectively social. So for him, social media, he think he sees what it is and what it isn't. Um, he doesn't subscribe to that in any way. He's a guy that would have two or three friends that are super tight. Yep. Daughter, more friends, you know, 10, 12, but knows everybody. Very, very different, very extended. So I think, I think that that's, kind of um when you talk about that he has the cognitive ability and always has had that to be able to um communicate much more like i'm communicating with you on an adult level yep. very, very different very very different deep thinker kid um blessing and sometimes a bit of a challenge yeah the the girl is a, a lot more um sensitive in a way to certain things so how you what you say to the my son yeah. would totally land differently <laughs> totally land differently and they're different people so they view me in a different way and i think that um they know that i'm in the arts they think that i'm funny and quirky and da 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 and then at the same time they're straight up like I will embarrass them. Uh, you know, like they're, they're like, like there are times where they're like, dad, don't talk. You talk too much. So it's kind of badass in a way, yeah. you know, it's kind of cool, but it's a beautiful thing too. Cause it, it checks me, you know, it helps me kind of like put some of that stuff to the side and realize like, how am I influencing them? Right. How am I influencing them? And I don't always want the spotlight pointed at me. I want the spotlight pointed at them. What am, what am I doing to help contribute to the spotlight being on them? What's important? And those things, uh, I think that's really uh, kind of amazing. And um, I think that that's how they see me very differently because they're, they're totally different. So of course they're going to have a different spin on dad, you know, and I'm not the, I'm, I'm not the, in a way I could be the easiest dad in the world. And then in a way I could be the most challenging dad in the world. So here you go from my son, who's far more intellectual and deep, deep, deep thinking. He's already figured out how to game dad, 
He knows exactly. <laughs> he knows, man. He knows freaking Seabiscuit. He's freaking smart. Where my daughter, who's intellectually advanced, but she'll get stuck on the emotional part. So she's more reactionary. Fascinating. Hasn't figured out how to game the system. So that's something where you go, you know, I can only um, add so much to that. And each one of them, as wonderful as they are, have different strengths and weaknesses and things that I'm working on and things that they're working on. And you realize as a parent, there are times where uh, the best parenting thing to do is get out of the way. Right. Ah, which is sometimes very, uh, which is very challenging if you're a person that's, uh, let's say, a little bit more of a type A personality, yeah. a control. I wouldn't say that I'm a control freak, but I'm a log- logical guy that's that's used to running. I'm used to running it. I'm used to running the show. <laughs> and, and there are times where you have to step out of the way. Um, I have a way. I, 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 I have a way with both kids where I do that um, sometimes not quite as on the nose where it's very subversive, where I'm intentionally analyzing the ladders that they're leaning up against buildings before they climb them. And I may say, hey, man, I think that ladder is cooler than that ladder or that building is cooler than that. But I realize that they're going to climb the ladder and it's my job to get out of the way and just be like, go, 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 get up the ladder. Um, and to also freaking be there in case they fall and try my best to catch. Right. Sometimes I'm not even there. Sometimes I miss it. But uh, not, a, not a second goes by where I'm not thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. You know, interesting about control, right? Because I think as a parent, like I have younger kids than you, Mm -hmm. in the early phases of parenthood, it's all it's it's a lot about control, right? Like, and Mm -hmm. and you talk about safety, like very focused on safety and Mm -hmm. you know learning basic skills, and so and you can kind of be in control. So that must be a tough shift of getting away from that as they get older. It is a very challenging shift, and so like you know in in crude broad strokes like for where you are right now like since i'm only a i'm only like a nickel maybe seven years past the journey where you are right now at at, at the beginning um so your five-year-old probably is either has gone through preschool is either in, in kindergarten going into kindergarten this year whatever it's about the same for the most part at the beginning if he or she can learn the skill of leaving mom and dad without a freak out, which is so hard. Uh, Maybe taking turns. Yeah. You're killing it. Yeah. Like, like talk, talk about like just super simple, all the other stuff. Like, do they play hockey? They don't play hockey. They ride a bike. They don't ride a bike. All those things. Like every kid's different. Every kid has different, I don't know, times that they're going to learn those things, be interested in those things, hate those things. That's all. That's jive in a way. What is interesting is by that time, have they learned how to take turns? Have they learned how to share a little bit? Um, When you're talking about control, okay, and I'm removing all the things that have to do with safety, like we're just going to toss that, duh, like just duh. Then you're looking at like what lessons can be learned safely without control. Right. Huge. And once you can do that, whether that's a parent that you respect, a teacher you respect, what other lesson can be learned? Maybe not from you. Right. Which is huge because, you know, Heroes don't always wear capes. There's different learning lessons that happen all the time. And um, And we don't have all the answers, right? Like not not only do you not have all the answers, it's a fully moving goalpost that changes all the time. Like what you think, even if you think you're landing on the right answer right now, 
an hour from now, that not, might not be what's needed for the situation. Right. So you're totally behind, you're behind the, you're, you're behind the eight ball. So, um, like I said, control, fascinating, fascinating on when to, when you're comfortable doing that, how much control is necessary, how much control, uh, do you give up who you give that up to? Um, but they're, they're looking for you at, to you for the guidance. So it can't, I'm of the opinion that it can't be just like sky's the limits. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't believe in that. And then I don't believe in it being too rigid. I believe that there's age appropriate learning And I think that now when you, when you're looking at like the control part of it, when you look at what's, what does that mean? Age appropriate control. How do I have to step in? Do I need to step in based on their age? Like for your two-year-old, it's super simple. You're like, dude, don't eat that. Like, (laughs) oh my God, like don't eat that. You know, don't, don't yank the dog's tail. You're God, you know, I mean, those are, they're so simple. And in a way, the, you're a long way away from le- letting up control. Right. Like you're a long way, like you're, you're the safety net, the provider, da, 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 da. You got a long way to go yep. with that one. With the five-year-old, you know, depending on where they are, you're learning to give them as much lead as they need, but at the same time being very mindful that you might need to jump in for the save (laughs) or pull back. And every kid's different. Every kid, what might be considered simple for your kids would be a challenge for my kids or vice versa. Maybe for one of, maybe your five-year-old, the challenge is still, I get spooked out when my mom and dad aren't around and there's a separation anxiety thing, which is like, how do you tackle that? And, and so forth. So that's the greatest thing is, um, what do you, what do you, what do you consider giving you? I can tell you this. If you don't learn to give up control, you're already losing the battle. Right. So you better figure out it. You better figure out a way what's considered acceptable for you or else you're stifling their growth, right. which is not, that's not rad dad. Right. <laughs> that's like, bad, that's boo. That's lame. <laughs> so, so, you know, I don't know the answer to that other than like you're, you're, you'll have to find the sweet spot for giving up control right. to whom you give that up to uh, because that's the only way they're going to develop is through, again, using the skateboard analogy. Sometimes it's going to be through thumps and lumps and, and through their own course of problem solving. Yeah. I think that's great advice. And, and at some point, it's not going to be your choice when you relinquish control as well, right? So um, that's the other piece of it. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's funny because it's funny because there's a certain, again, you have a very, you're in an interesting phase because for the most part, your two-year-old's going to totally, well, I, I'm going to use the five-year-old. The five-year-old for the most part is going to do what you say. Yeah. Going to do, you know, you're going to be like, Hey, don't do that. They're going to make a ton of mistakes. Totally get it. The two-year-old, of course, they're going to do whatever you say. In fact, they're going to, they're going to do the things that you say not to do, not because they mean to be vindictive, but because they're too, for God's yeah. sake, they're, they're kids, you know, they're going to do weird stuff. Yeah. Uh, they're going to yank the dog's tail. Like, woo-hoo! Sure. you know, I mean, duh, of course, with, with the, the five-year-old, you still have a lot of um, time where you can instill pretty, pretty cool values then you get to a spot where you've snuck in either on the nose or in a subversive way, what your core values are, what you and your wife think are important. I know I put a lot of thought into it. I'm sure you guys put a lot of thought into it. What's important to you. And then you're going to get to a place where that's going to be tested out in the real world. Right. And when I'm talking about control, 
now you're at a spot where you can no longer control how they behave outside of your close arms. So if they've never learned some basic skills of sharing and taking turns and da 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 da, or whatever it is, whatever the challenges are, dang, there's going to be a, a unique awakening. Now, here's where I, what I think is pretty cool. Life, no matter what, is going to deal you some thumps. Yep. The question is, would you rather the kids hear it from you or would you rather society deal out that thump? Right. And I can tell you, you have control of that. You have control of that. Like you can be as to a degree, again, age appropriate real yeah you can be real you know age appropriately uh but if you do not instill some kind of core and i'm gonna say positive core values (laughs) if you think you're gonna instill negative core values society will snap back on that and you and they will learn a brutal lesson out there which is heartbreaking to you know whatever that is but um, I will, I will use a very simple one and say, like, let's say uh, you think that it's okay to hate pink dinosaurs. Wink, wink. Now, for some people, what I'm talking about is being a racist or being uh, against gay people or whatever. Wherever. I'm a liberal, the left of the left of the left, different than your lens. Maybe you feel the same way. Maybe you don't. However, if you don't like pink, at some point in your life, the kids are going to be at somebody's house and they're going to see a pink dinosaur and they're going to be like, we hate pink dinosaurs. And here comes, you know, so, you know, the whole, like it takes a village at some point. They're outside arm's reach. They're outside mom and dad's purview, right? And some of those lessons are going to be challenged. And right. so uh, uh, that's what you, that's what, you know, going back to the control part, um, I realize, and I realized this a long time ago, that I, in my bones, in my bones, I thought that I have until they're about 15 to be the raddest, best, positive influence I could be. Post-15, you're going to start making some decisions, some ones that I'm going to back, some ones that I'm going to be like, that was crazy. <laughs> like, wow, but you support. Um, and so being a guy that's a bit of a thinker, I went into it and created a mantra, which I will share with you. Yeah. And I thought about this. And so I thought like, okay, by the time they're 18 and they've left and they're off to whatever their life's journey is, what have I done? What has Federica, my wife and I done? And I thought about this and I sat at my kitchen table and I wrote this out. It took me a few days, but it came down to this. It was healthy, happy, safe, kind, courteous, courageous, honest, respectful, responsible. Healthy, happy, safe, kind, courteous, courageous, honest, respectful, responsible. If I can tick those boxes and have some cognitive connection to those ideas and they're landing on the right side of that, just land on the right side of it, I'll have done my job as a rad dad and go, okay, beyond this, dude, let's figure it out. Let's see where we go. Um, That's kind of it. So I I did not go at it where I had all the answers, but I certainly was like, I want to point it that way. (laughs) I want to point it that way. You can't control the wind, but man, you can point your sails. And I have done everything in my ability to like the, the, our family to point the sails in the direction of what we think is going to be creating the best children that become young adults that become adults that are happy, healthy, safe, kind, courteous, courageous, honest, respectful, and responsible. Now, do my kids always adhere to that? 
Of course not. Right. They're kids. But there's a common understanding where they know where I'm coming from. Right. This Here's is, where I'm coming. Consistency. Like, this is what's important to me. You know, this is what's important to me. Right. And, I, and, I it's, and, w- and when you become 18, if that's not important to you, I'm okay with that. But at least I would have not it done my best to instill these, what I think are important core values. Right. And so we, we've kind of talked a, about you, you've kind of taken a very um, thoughtful, I think, um, intentional approach to your parenting, right? And, and mm-hmm. really sat down and thought about what's important to me um, mm-hmm. and, and how you kind of shape your kids. How has being a dad changed you? We, I mean, we talked about something specifically oh, like sobriety right. in the beginning, kind of, sure. a, you know, led you in that direction. What, what else kind of changed about Doug Carrion after becoming a parent? Um, I'm going to go with the, the, on the nose, the obvious, not being the center of attention, right? The obvious, not realizing that um, it definitely is not about me, not about me, uh, about That's family. Come to terms with though. Say that again. It's tough to come to terms with, though. It, it's tough to come to terms with. Uh, I, I, I can't say. So let me think about this for a second. I can't say what works for you. I can only say the, what the evolution is for me. It's made me more open-minded, more yeah. sensitive, more freakishly paranoid, more aware. Um, an example might be, pre-kids, I wouldn't have known what a good school district was versus a bad school district. I don't know those things, but now I kind of got a better idea. So yeah. those are the things that intellectually it has expanded. It has made me value time more. It's helped expand my way of thinking. It's reminded me to focus on the good and the humor Mm-hmm. in things uh yeah like that's probably I, I could probably go on for weeks and weeks and weeks on how it's changed me um i think it's changed me for the positive because yeah. it's 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 added another layer of what i already find interesting which is life and as i'm engaged in this real-time movie and life that i can kind of like I, look i can move, i can affect this in a great way i can affect it in a positive way i can affect it in a negative way but i am a participant in it uh it's made me learn how to be more present challenging your patience how to be more patient Mm -hmm. and more patient like you can't get enough of that um how to uh, uh in a way um focus on the things that are important and just completely remove things that aren't important and not validate them. Um, focus on work. It's helped me focus on work more. You know, what's important to me when I'm spending time away from my family and I'm recording or doing shows and stuff like that. What is my intention? What's my purpose? I'm certainly not there to meet girls or drink or anything right. like that. I'm there. I'm there to entertain people, which is something that I love. I love the fans and I love entertaining people and how is that relationship changed and stuff like that. So all all of the above, you know, I mean, again, if you're, I think that if you're, um, if you're present in this life and you take a snapshot of where you are today, and then you take another snapshot of where you are 15 years from now, or however long your journey is, even you, you're not the same person that you were seven years, five years ago, uh, when you, six years ago, when your wife got pregnant, you're getting ready to start doing that. You've had so many experiences and you're filing them in different places. Ones that you're like, wow, that was the best thing ever. Or one that was like, that was not a great experience. And I never want to relive that again. Um, So it changes you. And I think it changes you. If you're paying attention, it changes you for the positive. And for me, totally changed me for the positive. And um, almost uh, in a bit of a way, a, a, a bit of a, 
a way for me to identify how to be my best self, Ch- putting that to the test. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think because your kids are almost, um, this is the way I see it a little bit. So it, it might be different for you. Like your kids are almost like a, a mirror, like a check, a check on you. And so you, you have to think about the things that you do in the context of what effect does it have on my children? And so in that way, help helps you to Im- be more, um, critical of what you do right that, that's that's me anyway i don't totally. know if it's the same thing well i'm gonna you know again there's there's it's you're absolutely right and and i i support that idea and it is you're you're going into a place where you know what is it do, let me I'll, I'll i'll try to break it really break it down into simple zeros and ones. Is parenting important? Yes or no. <laughs> if parenting is important to you, you and you're on the yes side of the box, all of a sudden this a, 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 a infinite amount of questions have come up. Yeah. Challenges, problems, blah, 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 blah. If you're in the B, if you're in the other box where parenting isn't important to you, um, I'm not that, I like, I don't have much to offer you. You're like, I'm, uh, but if you're over in the parenting is important, then all of a sudden that means that, oh, wow, you've decided that you're going to raise a child. If you're not looking at that with critical thinking, sometimes to a fault, you're going to make mistakes. I get it. But if you're not looking at that with critical thinking, what lens are you looking at parenting with? Yeah. Like that almost opens up a bigger question of, you know, kids don't raise themselves, right. you know, uh, 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 certainly kids in towns, rural areas, cities, civilized countries, so forth and so on. They don't raise themselves. They raise, they are raised in conjunction with their development and coaches right. <laughs> parents from right. the sidelines that are like yay nay yay nay that's how it happens that's crit- talk about critical thinking you dude you and and wife have signed up to be the critical thinkers and that's your job for yeah. a minute yeah. or two or three or 18 years deep yeah. and then the question becomes when do they become critical thinkers? Now, I can't tell you that because everybody's different, but I would imagine that you're, I'm uh, probably older than you are, but I would say for my wiring, I don't think I was totally locked in until my late 20s, early 30s, yeah. where I was like, you know, so that means, you know, putting on your dad critical thinking hat, you may be needing to, you know, uh, uh, be a, be a good spokesperson, (laughs) be a good parent for a minute, for a minute, man, they're going to need your, they're going to need, they're going to need some sound advice now. And again, sometimes uh, requested, sometimes not requested, you know, and you're going to have to decide, (laughs) but for God's sake, that's critical. (laughs) So Doug, you kind of mentioned earlier, you kind of touched on it very briefly about um, mm. uh, grandparents. So mm. your parents, are you able to talk a little bit about what your relationship was like with your dad? And yes. maybe how that uh, applies to how you parent? Of course, of course. Great thing. Okay, so here you go with my thing. I was raised by my mom. I was not raised by my dad. I was raised by a strong mom freakishly liberal, sometimes too liberal for what the hell was she thinking now that I put on my 2021 dad hat, you know? Um, So my relationship with my mom is very different than the relationship with my dad. My dad uh, and my mom divorced when I was about three. So I did not grow up with my dad. Um, So my relationship with my dad, as challenging as that sounds, isn't like a regular relationship that I have with my son. And if we're going to use the relationship that I have with my son uh, as let's say, whatever the the very crude umbrella of, okay, that's what a father son relationships like, whatever, because everybody's different. 
mine wasn't like that. I was raised by my mom. So dad, not in the picture, a little bit more like an uncle that he got to visit every once in a while. Um, so not as influential on any of my core values compared to my mom. Uh, so I, so single parent, more, more single parent. Now my mom did make some pretty, um, what I would consider questionable decisions on relationships, which affect kids. So I grew up in a household that was really freaking loud, very, very loud, a lot of tension, a lot of action. Um, And it wasn't until now bringing it back to me where I realized when it was my turn at bat to be a parent, some things that I was going to do and some things I wasn't going to do. And that's kind of it. So there are some things like the stuff that my mom taught me about loving and accepting people and things that are a lot more along the lines of my, like my mission, my mantra that I learned from my mom, my mom's freaking rad mom. Uh, There are other things that I didn't, that I wasn't going to expose my kids to, for example, alcohol and drugs and things like that, that were readily available in my house, which I think now you go, holy smokes. Like my mom was pretty on a different side of the equation, but my mom was also a byproduct of rebelling from the fifties and a parent in the sixties. So what would be considered acceptable by today's standards wouldn't be back then and vice versa. So I, by no means do I judge or fault her for that. Uh, but there are certain things that, that, that how she, how she would swing at the pinata. I wouldn't do that, you know, right. but cool on to the grandparents, um, uh, on my dad's side, not connected to on my mom's side. Um, my grandmother, I grew up with my grandmother very close by. So my grandmother, nice. uh, 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 lived like a door, two doors down from where I grew up at the beach, which is kind of incredible, oh. um, which is really great. Now, for the current situation, this is what's great. Uh, I actually have the grandparents live with me. Oh. So Federica's mom and dad live here with me. Cool. With us. So what's amazing is we are i'm italian our culture is again generally speaking the grandparents are kept very very close into the queue yeah very very close so when you talk about raising kids of course i'm raising kids my wife and i are raising kids but i also have two great grandparents that are helping in that right. sometimes they make great decisions sometimes they don't they have a tendency to sit a little bit more in the back seat on certain things and let Federica and I take the lead um but I'm very familiar with that dynamic of having grandparents in the house and I think that's great that the kids have anytime kids can have more people that love them and guide them that's great that's a great thing so I'm re- very very fortunate in that Um, we have set up our household where we actually have a multi-generational household. Yeah, that's very cool. I, you know, when I was a kid, I grew up with my grandfather living Mm -hmm. right next door as well. And it really was an amazing experience. And actually my aunt as well. And um, Mm -hmm. to have, you're right, to have that extra layer of support and um, just, yeah, love, I think is probably the important kind of piece of it um is very cool so you know interesting and i don't think we necessarily need to go back to it but you mentioned earlier about some of those influences or or maybe advice that comes to you from other folks about how to parent or whatever you're probably Mm -hmm. kind of dealing with those on a micro level day to day as well right having to manage that dynamic yeah i i think it i I think you yes there, that's very true. And now I'm pretty far along into the process. So right. we're 15 years in. So um, for, the new, for the new parents, here's what I would suggest. Whenever you get into a situation where there's three generations, a, a little teeny kid 
a mom and a grandparent, whether it's your mom or your mother-in-law, there's going to be a lot of differences of opinions. Right. When you keep adding to that, you're adding lots of layers of challenges. Now, I would say it's okay for you to just have a stock answer, something like this. I appreciate your advice. It's very, very sweet. I think I got this. Right. I know where you're coming from. I know that your heart's in the right place. Let's figure this one out. And if you can calmly, because even though you're raising kids, you're also trying to educate your parents on your role. Yeah. And you're the primary decision maker. Now, if you have like my mom, I'll ask my mom advice and she has great advice. And then there's times that I don't consider her advice. Totally fine. And um, cause I wouldn't say that's still my mom. I wouldn't say that, that we're equal, <laughs> you know, we're, you know, I respect her and stuff, but we're both adults. Yeah. So, you know, in a way we're equals and, and how, how she would do something wouldn't be the way I would do it. How I would do it wouldn't be the way that she does it. And she really very much respects our position and decisions on things. So I would say when you're, you know, for people going into that, um, to just be aware that sometimes people are going to want to offer advice. Don't take it too personal. Right. Just, just learn how to just, you know, just learn how to shrug it off or learn how to just gracefully not add fuel to the fire. So Right. What what you're missing is when a mother-in-law or a grandma or somebody says, hey, I think you should put the diapers on like this or da 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 whatever it is, what if you don't see that that could turn into a problem, you're not using critical thinking. So beware that sometimes that can boomerang backwards. You have to be aware of that. And then there are other times where it's like, sometimes you really value that opinion and it's okay. Remember, you're okay to take sample cells of different ideas and come up with your own approach. That's great. That's awesome. There's not a, you know, there's, there's not a one size fits all approach to raising kids, right. let alone, the dynamic, like you're in such a fluid situation that it's okay for you to either, uh, you know, one of the things too, that I, that I would say is also that I learned. Okay. I'm going to go back to, I'm going to swing into two things learned, but as part of parenting, but as part of grandparenting and how to navigate that. Whenever I find myself looking at a situation and I could perhaps be emotional and have a knee-jerk emotional reaction with the exception of safety. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. You learn how to be humble, learn how to just let things slide, be the flute, be the water, not the rock. Yeah. Not everything is a battle. Not everything has to be a take off the gloves. We're going down raw. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, life ain't like that, man. You have to learn what's important and what's not important. And I think that when you sharpen your problem solving skills, you're able to analyze advice that other people get and eloquently maneuver around right. validating or politely dismissing that advice. And you just have to think about Sharpen that tool. However you sharpen that tool, it's up to you. But I know here in the States, sometimes you get parents that'll step in and say, hey, you mind telling your kid not to throw yeah. the salt shaker in the restaurant? You know, now in certain cultures, that would be like, how dare you talk to my kid? Da, 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 da. In other cultures, that would might be considered like, thank you. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> or the question is, why aren't you stepping in and saying, hey man, don't throw the salt shaker. You know, right. so all of those things would require critical thinking. But um, I think that uh, uh, with that, and, and you'll find this too, um, you have to decide, do some critical thinking on, 
how you're going to do that and how you're going to maneuver around um, people lobbing in advice. Right. Uh, they're not wrong for doing that. It might even be instinctual for them. And with new parents, in a way, your, their, your, your relationship with your parents has changed. Pop, changed, totally changed. Yeah, totally. So, you know, you can accept that. Uh, uh, and try to learn how to have a new relationship and how, what the new boundaries are. And that is badass. And yep. that's great. And that's a, a learning thing. And that's great. And, and there's going to be some times where you're going to be challenged, where you're going to have to say, you know what, I love you. And I think that, thank you for your advice yeah. on this one. I think yeah. I'm going to, I think, you know, wife and I are going to figure this one out. Yeah. You know, what, you know, whatever. Yeah. Ho hopefully you don't have to do that for a long time, but at the beginning, definitely within the first year, that no. suckers. Can, woo. You're yeah, going to have to tough. navigate that. That's, you're going to have to navigate that because, um, if you say it's different too, because like, let's say for you, like, um, let's say your mom and dad, like what, what you could say to your mom and dad, guys, I got this. Da -da -da -da. You could be a little bit more curt. Yep. Ha! You can't say that to the in-laws that'll right. land backwards, dude. That'll blast backwards. Yeah. Or your wife will get pissed because you're talking to them too. Yeah. So right. you're like, you really got to figure out how to navigate with, with that. But if you're, again, if you're looking at it from a few, from 360, a couple different ways, and you're not handling something from an emotional place and it's not a safety thing, you're just trying to do the right thing. Most people, if the grandparents are good people and they're sweet and their hearts are in the right place, their core values are okay. Yeah, <laughs> you don't have to, right? you don't have to totally like block them from every freaking thing. Right. right. It's a beautiful thing. Kids can learn too, because yeah. they've got to have that relationship too. You know, just something super simple, like, you know, what might fly at your house doesn't fly at grandparents' house. Right. Or vice versa. <laughs> Or vice versa. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Cause it just, it allows you to, you're in, you're in this vehicle of raising kids and you have to do some critical thinking on how to navigate to still keep your core values, but also not to be a jerk. Right. You know, yeah, totally. Do, you know what I mean? Cause that, cause kids pick up on that. Right. Yeah, they do. You they know? do. Uh, what, I want to kind of like uh, close off a bit of the parenting discussion on mm. tell me some uh, really rewarding things about being a parent to you. Like what's the most rewarding aspect of being a parent? Um, okay. So I'll, 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 I'll bring it into little blocks. Okay. Right. Let's do it. So the, for zero to five, maybe the first time teaching them how to swim. Yeah. Badass. Great. Great. Incredible. Uh, the, when you realize that they're um, first time they, uh, so teaching them how to swim. So for me, what's the most rewarding is when I see their confidence building. Yeah. Anything I can do to help do that. Great. If I can just watch it from afar, great, badass. So there's that. And then as they get the next chunk, let's say like five to 10, um, watching how they handle themselves in situations, how they make friends, how they navigate friends, friends they choose that are good, friends they choose that are bad, how rewarding it is when they're atta attacking something that's challenging, whether it's school or interpersonal or anything like that, watching that evolution, loving the... Um, how, you know, when I can help build that, you know, put on the pom-poms and help build that confidence. Yeah. And then moving into the, as I have a teenager now yeah. uh, and starting to get interested in girls and that talk about dicey because um, that's a challenging one. You know, that's a challenging subject for anybody, whether you're a, a teeny bopper, a middle-aged person, a divorced person, a widow, <laughs> relationships are hard and challenging and such, but that's also very fascinating to see that, um, 
teaching my son to drive. Yeah. Amazing. 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 So it's, yeah, like you're describing situations where like you've, you've imparted some, some skills yeah. um, and some, some knowledge and advice that results in kind of a new um, ability and a new confidence. You said confidence mm-hmm. a few times. So it's kind of oh. seeing them become, become their own confident person. That is true. And also, you know, the other thing too is um, letting them know that it's okay that they're going to make mistakes. Even for me, learning that as they get more challenging. So where I am right now, not to put too fine a pin on it, is they're starting to separate themselves from the homeostasis. They want to be more independent. So they're losing the God complex of mom and dad. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that means they're going to question, well, what can I do on my own? Can I do this on my own? What are my core values and so forth? So that is an evolution of development that I can't and won't control. What's interesting is to just let them know that if you're stuck, pause and just ask yourself, what would dad do? Yeah. Just that's the thing. So up to this point, I would say both of them are pretty good thinkers in the difference between what right or wrong. And I'm breaking it down into just binary yeah. right or wrong, <laughs> good, bad, right or wrong. Or what would dad do? Just give me those two filters. Like, is that right or wrong? Well, I don't know. What would dad do? And if the, and, and I'm pretty confident that they're going to do some things and they're going to make some pretty funky decisions. But if they just use those two, two uh, 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 tests, yeah. they'll find their way to the right thing. You know, maybe what I would do is wrong. Maybe it's not what I would do. It's what you would do. But for the, for the most part, um, I'm even uh, circling back to the skateboarding thing, I don't necessarily think slamming is a bad thing. It hurts. Yeah. It sucks. But boy, it's what you do with the data post the slam. <laughs> How do I not you do know? that next time? So, you know, that I think is kind of kind of cool. And now, you know, when, you know, in a way we're talking about like Luca is a critical thinker. Ariana is much more of an emotional thinker, but that doesn't mean that she's not a critical thinker. It's just she views things in a very different way through a different lens. You know, she has a very different approach to things, but certainly has the ability to pump the brakes and cognitively say, oh, wow, what would dad do? Is this the right thing? Is this the wrong thing? I would not wish it upon any parent to have it where something tragic happens to a kid. Oh, talk about a freaking nightmare, dude. That's horrible. I can't watch movies that have to do with kids that they get abducted or hurt or anything like that. Like, dude, no, 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 no. Too real. No, no, no. I got my own challenges. But I know that up to this point, let's say both of them would know just the basics. Like, you know, somebody is going to say to them, I'm not dumb. I'm not dumb. I grew up in the freaking music world. Somebody's going to say to them, here, smoke this. Here, try this. Here, drink this. Point, they've had pretty not judgy, but just really solid information on why that's a kind of not a great idea right and i hope that they're gonna apply that now do they don't they up to this point both of them pretty freaking smart and make and good decision makers that's all you can really do you know he's giving them the information keep, yeah. keep trying to keep trying to drill in on that at some point they're gonna make the decisions so you have a you have a window of opportunity to try to help them come to those conclusions safely as best you can, you know, and then at some point they're going to make those decisions. They're going to be faced with, you know, there's a car full of kids. Some of them have been drinking. 
do I get in the car? Because right. that's the fastest way to the movie theater. Blah, blah, blah. Or do I think, hold on, that's a bad idea. Do I call dad? Do I text dad? Da, right. da, 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 da. Like These are a bunch of options. Just want them to know what their options are. Just know your options. You got a lot of options. Getting in the car is one of them. Is it the best? Boo, (laughs) bad option. (laughs) Boo, bad option. (laughs) Yeah, that's great. So Doug, tell me, I want to hear about what you have going on right now. I know field day, um, that's been a big focus uh, for the last, well, getting on almost two years now. So it's been a weird year for music, 2020 mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. What do you have going on right now? Let's let's talk about what you're up to. Okay, so so now we'll put on we'll put on that hat for a yes. minute. Not that not the rad dad hat, although it is pretty rad. The rad. So part. I'm in, I'm involved in a couple different things. Uh, for for people that don't know, and and I had touched on this way at the beginning where I had said I described myself as a punk rock impresario. That's really what I am. I'm a guy that's. I'm able to take an idea from my head to guitar, to the recording studio, to the manufacturing part, to the marketing part, to the concert, to the stage, to actually being back up on the stage playing. Like I can do all those parts. Kind of crazy, kind of rad. Um, What I'm involved in is I'm very much involved in a project called Field Day. Field Day is myself, Peter Kortner, Kevin Avery, uh, Shea Mirdad. It's a, it's a, a, what you'd call a punk, maybe a melodic punk band. Um, Peter and I both played in Dag Nasty. Um, So we're involved in that space. Uh, It is a recording and live band. Um, And there's a whole giant long thing of what Field Day does. Um, With COVID, when we knew COVID was happening, we took the live band off the table and we focused on the studio band. So we have been pretty busy writing and recording. We released two titles this year. Um, one of them called Field Day 2.0, one of them called Opposite Land. The 2.0 came out in June, Opposite Land came out in November, a seven inch on 2.0, a five song EP on Opposite Land, both on Unity Worldwide, distributed in the States through Rev HQ distributed in Germany through Cortex on Unity Worldwide Records. Now, um, both of those releases produced by myself, uh, mixed by Cameron Webb, who uh, does Pennywise, Motorhead, Bad Religion, Ignite, woo, you know, yeah. woo, that yeah. ass, uh, which is huge. So that's where Field Day is, is, is been primarily focused on the studio part of the equation. Uh, Okay, so we're going to put Peel Day to the side. Then I'm also involved in the publishing world. Uh, so uh, I have a company called 230 Hermosa, which is pretty much focused on um, helping artists either recalibrate their publishing, assisting with their publishing, helping monetize that world. And sometimes it's a little bit daunting because you don't know a lot about it. Uh, right. So there's, there's that. Now, uh, so right now, currently, I'm in the process of working with Tom Lyle from Government Issue um, and going through the entire Government Issue catalog to properly have it set up. So when um, a song from you plays or a song from Joy plays or whatever, Tom's being properly paid. Right. So there's that hat. Also work with Instead, blah, 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 blah. So there's the the publishing hat. Then the other thing that I'm doing is I also mentor these two kids that are doing a podcast yes. called, <laughs> called, which is the Bad Music Taste podcast. Right. And so these two guys, uh, it's a, a, a guy named Cameron, a boy named Cameron, or uh, named uh, Dominic and a girl named Samantha. So Dom and Sam, and they're both 13. They live in Baltimore. And I was on their podcast and um, we hit it off. And I had asked them after the podcast if they wanted some help kind of connecting them with other people and talent. And so I'm kind of, in a way, grooming these super smart, badass podcast kids that are on their journey 
of um, maybe what would be considered, let's say, like the flip side or the triple X of today's thing. Yeah, yeah that's so cool. I, I've i watched and listened to a couple of those episodes and they're so good. And I was I was so curious. I, I was like, I don't think these are his kids. Uh, so I was curious no. what the relationship was there. So that makes sense. Yeah. And, and, and so, cool. so it, the, the way that one, to give you a little bit more information on that one, the way that one unfolded was as we met, I realized like they're crazy smart, crazy smart kids. And um, each one of them, you know, each one of them are going to do great things in the future. Like I just, you just go, Oh my God, these kids are freaking badass crazy i it would not surprise me if sam goes into politics she's rad it wouldn't surprise me if dominic stays in the music world not he might be a player he loves playing but more on the uh maybe running a record label yeah like they're like that they're they're rad these kids are rad smart they're funny so, crazy so great. yeah and the, yeah the they're, questions they're, are so thoughtful for their age right it's amazing yeah and see so the thing is is that, like not to be disrespectful but in your in your mind you're looking at them as kids 13 yep i don't look at them as kids i realize they're kids they're yep. 13 but I look at them as like, as like musical equals in a yeah. way, like business equals. So we have straight talk. I realize they're kids, but they're freaking smart. Like those guys, they're not, um, they're smart kids. Like they're, 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 they're advanced kids compared to other, you know, uh, kids. These guys are freakishly smart. They're freaking smart kids. So it's not a surprise that they'll have deep intellectual conversations about music and art and they each like different styles of music fascinating off the rip fascinating kids i recommend people who go check it out the bad music taste podcast and they're just chipping away the beautiful thing is they're kind of like they do it when they have time and then there are times where they're kids and they have to study and they gotta focus on yeah. studying and, and and you go that's real that's how the real world is you know it yeah. becomes a priority and then it's an equal thing where they're juggling other stuff. So it's, I'm really uh, happy to be part of their journey and I, I hope that they stick with it and keep going with it. And it's great. And then back to field day, you know, with the field day thing, um, what it looks like in the not too distant future for us, we're definitely like, we're, we've already been recording and we're going back All into right. the studio t top part of April. So we're going to go back in again. Uh, it would not surprise me if we have another seven inch that may be a split seven inch with a band from the East coast. I can't say who, oh. but it would be two songs from this band, two songs from field day. We do the splitsies. It would come out on unity worldwide. And then it's conceivable that those two bands will do some dates in Europe covid pending november roughly november uh, october 30th through around november 17th so that's kind of like talk about like on the like that's yeah. literal literally like to the minute what i'm doing is like prepping for a studio <laughs> getting ready to go in the studio i'll produce cameron mixes so peter who uh, on this field day subject um uh uh Peter lives in Philly. I live in Los Angeles. So we work remotely too. So that's another fascinating thing too, but I don't want to be too long winded unless that's really, unless you have a one up, I'll talk all freaking day, let alone talk all day about music or parenting, like either one. So well, I don't want to yeah, I'm, freak I mean, out stoked, your listeners. I'm stoked to hear about field day for sure. I, um, you know, there was lots of buzz kind of right around when yep. field day was, was starting up. Right. And I remember hearing 2.0, um, and mm -hmm. I think first song searching for the answers. Right. And I was like, mm -hmm. I am all in like, it just hit so hard. Like, yeah. So, and opposite land. Amazing. So I'm stoked to hear you guys are getting back in the studio. That's great. Yeah. In fact, like what's amazing is we've already been back in the studio once before. This is the second time since opposite land. So it is, um, it is 
unique. Now let's go a little bit further on that one. So um, Peter and I played in this band called Dagnasty and Dagnasty was, was on the, the record that most people know us for is this record called Wig Out at Danko's which was done through Discord Records, and this other one that was on Giant Records called Field Day, which is this green record, which has these legs on it. And that particular record might even be the one that people hate the most in the Dagnasty catalog. So people lo- there are a lot of people that love Wig Out, and they don't like the, the Field Day record. There are some people that love the Field Day record. They tolerate the wig out record, but it mix and match either way. Peter and I have been given this unique opportunity of being a, um, to some degree, a legacy band. And yet at the same time, trying to write right. things that we think are really cool and current and interesting and challenging um, and so way at the beginning, when we were talking, even before we did our first rehearsal, we, Peter and I knew that we were going to go about uh, nine months being able to play a lot of Dagnasty stuff. We play the first three Dagnasty records, note for note, spot on, better than the 1988 band. And I can say it because I was there. Yeah. So if you have a chance to see Field Day, um, you definitely should. And if you love those other records, it is, you know, I will pat myself on the back and say, it's freaking phenomenal. It's spot on. Come sing along. It's badass. It's great. If you want to hear the new stuff, that's great too. Come on down. So we, we knew way at the beginning that we were going to have about nine to 12 months where we could do the o- older material, yep. right? That, you know, Hey, play all ages show or whatever. Woo-hoo! And Peter and I, you know, the band can knock it out. No problem. Um, better than before. Uh, and then at some point we were going to have to start introducing new music, yeah. um, which was something that he really wanted to do. We both agreed to do right out of the, from, from right out of the gate, but we weren't going to do it right then. We were like, all right, let's go for a minute and then jump into the, into the recording. The live shows were going very, very well. And people were coming out and singing along and da, 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 da. Right. Once we got to, we were right around, we were in March of last year. We were getting ready to do dates in Florida. Okay. And we had all of a sudden this COVID thing had happened and we were like, oh shoot, we've got to pull the brakes. Um, So that kind of gave us even a second, I guess you could say window of opportunity for writing. So you know, um, that's kind of been amazing in a way, kind of like, you know, how you're supposed to like make hay while the sun shines kind of thing. Like we are, you, we used the window of opportunity to be like, okay, we're going to double down on music. Um, when we were doing, like, as we were finishing up shows, as we were finishing up shows in, um, the States, we're doing, we had done, we're doing a double hit in Texas, like Austin and Dallas. And right as the band, right as we, um, finished uh uh doing those shows for us and i'm gonna say like remember before we were talking about like the control thing like i'm the band leader the guy that you know makes a lot of the decisions on that um we we were we were planning on having downtime from uh from december 15th to january 15th before doing shows and we had already had some shows toward the tail end of january we were supposed to go to sacramento and oakland so those were kind of already done but when we took the break at the 15th peter went home he went back to philly and i kind of went in to put on my writing hat and i kind of like started hashing out ideas and those ideas then right in february we started recording that's what became the 2.0 and then once we started getting back to the shows we did the shows in january we had a couple of hits in in february we did a uh san diego phoenix uh laughlin nevada run all of a sudden we had to pull the brakes uh, on um because of covid yeah but we were just able to sneak in all of the mixing and everything into um the pressing plant so we got really incredibly lucky 
because a lot of my friends who had records that were supposed to come out yeah. in 2020, their records got bumped right. because the pressing plants all closed. We, we manufacture everything in Germany. So kind of got lucky there. And then right once we saw that there was the window for recording, we just went right back into writing more music and went back into the studio again and, and recorded another round of songs. So it's kind of, that's kind of where we are is um, I, I'm, I'm watching the window. You know, if there is a window in respect to playing live again, I know it's going to happen soon. I don't know to what conditions those are talk about X factors don't know yet. Yeah. Um, but we're definitely like recording, 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 recording. And I would imagine field day is going to have something um, in the summer and then spring of 2022. So it's kind of what's, what's. Yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. I, I was just talking with a friend yesterday who was saying he had heard that some of these field day shows were just incredible. So I think, yeah, the, the buzz is there. People can't wait to, to get out and see you guys. So, and I know you're excited to get out there too. Yeah. And the other thing too is, um, yes, it's great. The other thing, what, what some people might not know or, or, what not is that um, we're we're a punk band and we kind of stand by that relationship with our fans in a, in a slightly different way where um, a lot of times after we're done playing shows we hang out for a little while yeah, cool. and, and and sometimes bands don't do that I can't I'm not too judgy but for the most part Peter and I like we, we figure if somebody's going to spend their money to come out and see us and somebody's going to spend their Saturday night or whatever to come out and see the band, we kind of feel it a bit of a, a bit of a responsibility to, to leave ourselves a bit open to communicating with them and having fun and catching up with making new friends, running into old friends and so forth. So that's one of the cool things too for us is that we've really built in this kind of informal meet and greet after the shows which That's has been a t just super fun like great for you know great for everybody you know everybody that wants to come out and see it because it because we you know we there, there isn't this giant distance between i guess um as you can imagine uh talking to me i'm not i'm, I'm a relatively approachable person Hey, sunshine. <laughs> this is Elise. Sorry. <laughs> hi, Elise. Uh -oh. How are you? Say hi, Dad. Hi. Why don't you How are you? And uh, go see mom and sister, and I'll come up in a few minutes, okay? Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> see? <laughs> no, dude, I love it. I got to keep it Bugs Bunny. I got to keep exactly. it Bugs Bunny. Oh, no, it's you know, all good. They just got home. Yeah. No, no, no. So when I, what, for me, when I keep it Bugs Bunny, that's like from the bandstand, I have to be careful not to curse or say anything like that. Right. Just in yeah, case yeah. There are people with video cameras and stuff, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Anyway. So, um, yeah, that's kind of it. So we, like I said, we're, we're, uh, very user-friendly and, and we kind of, we believe in the idea that there's a reason why people are at the shows that it's more of a kind of um a community community experience and we still we still believe in that still welcome that and like just want to hang out with people and in theory people if they're like-minded and you communicate in a positive way that extends outward and that continues to extend outward so something that we're kind of like working on and it's, it wouldn't, it, a lot of times when I'm writing, I am writing as, as though I'm having conversations with my kids. So like, like searching for the answers, for example, is definitely like a, something like that, like a conversation where here I am making music and how do I make things relevant? What do I want to say? And how do I want to express myself? And how, how can I be helpful? How can I be useful? Right. You know, challenges, things you're thinking about. So those are, those are all things that sometimes come from a, a, not a judgy place, but from a parenting kind of, from a parenting lens on, on how to um, elaborate on ideas or, or being honest with yourself about not having the answers to everything and how to navigate stuff because it's a constantly, it's a constantly changing playing field, you know, yeah. kind of cool. 
No, that's, that's rad. Doug, I want to thank you so much for taking the time today to, to come talk to us about parenthood. And it's awesome hearing about what you've got going on as well. I can't wait to hear some new field day. Um, any, I know you had said before you didn't really have necessarily advice for parents, anything you want to leave new parents with, or we've talked a lot about, um, <laughs> about some of this already, but oh, like final, oh, a final, final thoughts on parenting. It goes by in a blink of an eye. Keep your eyes open. Just keep your eyes. It moves lightning fast. You're always going to, you're always going to have problems. So just learn how to tackle some problems. If it was easy, you know, everybody would do it. It's it, you know, so don't worry. Don't focus on the negative, focus on the positive when you can Um, try to be as present as you can keep your eyes open, man. It moves super fast move super fast. You might even forget for you, like, you know, dude, I'm wearing the same shirt, but you could see your daughter's age. Ding, 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 ding. And so your, your, your landmarks are, you know, the time is now going to be punctuated by the photographs of your kids um, getting bigger. Take pictures, take pictures, take video, take video, keep your eyes open, watch it, give yourself a break. Remember there's other people. If you get to a spot where you have, and, and this is with all seriousness. If you get to a spot where you feel like you're being destructive, reach out for mental health. It's okay. It's okay if you're overwhelmed. Get help. Get yeah. help. You know, that's, a, that's okay too, to be, to be honest with yourself that you don't have all the answers. You're not supposed to. It's a journey. Um, try to enjoy it and, and just be the best parent you can be. And realize that you're not perfect. You're going to have flaws. You know, try not to focus too much energy on the flaws, you know, and, and if it's anything that's a bigger flaw, get help. It's okay. You know, get help. That's a huge, that's huge. Enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Th- that's awesome. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. My it's pleasure. Super fun talking with you. Um, yeah. You. I wish you all the best and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see you at a, at a show one of these days. For sure. I'll be the one in black. You'll see me. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks a gazillion. Thanks a million for the call. I appreciate it. It was great talking about parenting. Any of the new parents out there, have fun. Be cool. Thanks a gazillion, Brett. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Doug. Take care. Okay, ciao. Bye.